Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Kumusta naman kayo? Thank you very much for joining us. We will begin with the Philippine National Anthem to be followed by a short prayer. Lord, in this holy season of prayer and song and laughter, we praise you for the great wonders you have sent us, for shining star and angel song, for infants cry in lowly manger. We praise you for the word made flesh in a little child. We behold his glory and are bathed in its radiance. Be with us as we sing the ironies of Christmas, the incomprehensible comprehended the poetry made hard fact the helpless babe who cracks the world asunder we kneel before you shepherds innkeepers wise men help us to rise bigger than we are amen To the esteemed educators of the school's division of Makati City and everyone tuning in with us this morning, magandang umaga po ulit sa inyong lahat. Welcome to the webinar on the use of Math Plus apps for blended learning. I am Dr. Jumela F. Sarmiento and I will be your moderator for today. So let me uh, begin with an introduction of uh, the Math Plus apps. Let me share my slides. So I will now give a short introduction on the Math Plus apps and will introduce the project team. University. Anytime during our presentation, uh, we will invite you to type your questions in the comment section. We will try to answer your questions at the Q&A portion of this webinar. The webinar is made possible through our project entitled Technology Innovation for Mathematical Reasoning, Statistical Thinking, and Assessment by the Math Plus team funded by the Department of Science and Technology Philippine Council for Industry, Energy, and Emerging Technology Research and Development, or DOST, Pichard, and implemented by Ateneo de Manila University in coordination with the University of Southern Mindanao. We are very grateful to the DepEd Schools Division Office, Makati City, for our organizing this webinar. Special thanks to OICSDS, Arlene Esedilia, Sese, and Mr. Michael Lee, Education Supervisor, Program Supervisor for Mathematics. The project is currently ongoing and aims to create a digital mathematics learning environment where Filipino children can learn mathematics and think by and form for themselves 
in solving mathematics problems. The digital learning environment consists of a digital mobile application with accompanying user manuals for grades 1 to 10 mathematics, a large-scale database for assessment, and a large-scale database for statistical learning, which is what we call Censo Escuela Filipinas. The project is a continuation of the DOSTP shared funded project that ran from 2015 to 2018. It's called Development of Interactive Software and Teaching Guides for Grade 7 to 10 Mathematics. The project was aimed to facilitate the implementation of the mathematical, mathematical objectives raised by the Department of Edu Education's K-12 program through the use of innovative digital technologies. In particular, a selection of application software or apps were created for grades 7 to 10 mathematics that covered topics indicated in the five strands outlined in the K-12 program namely number sense, geometry, measurement, patterns and algebra, and statistics and probability. The design of the apps were informed by an amalgamated framework of the cognitive theory of multimedia learning and mathematical theories of representation. These applications were field tested among students and faculty members from private and public high school. In addition, the team created teaching guides and conducted teacher training in various parts of the country to orient teachers and educators on the use of the application. The research results from the project have been published in different Scopus journal, such as the International Journal of Mathematics Education in Science and Technology, the Philippine Journal of Science, and the International Journal of Technology in Mathematics Education. These papers describe in detail the theoretical framework and the design of the applications and results of the studies on student learning. The research findings have been presented in different uh, international conferences. And the current project the current project has the following uh, papers that were accepted for publication just very recently. Last night, our team leader, Dr. Uh, Luis Antonet de las Peñas, presented our, uh, our apps no, in the Asian Technology Conference in Mathematics. So it is an ongoing uh, conference. We have formed partnership with three schools division office like the, Man, like the Mandaluyong City, Marikina City, and Quezon City. Signing of the MOU was done last September. And we look forward to our partnership with SDO Makati City. The signing of the MOU will be held towards the end of this webinar. So for now, tatlo muna, but later on, at the end of this webinar, there will be four partner uh, SDOs. Now allow me to introduce the current team members who make up the project. So we first have our project leader, Dr. De Las Peñas, Dr. Maria Luis Antonette De Las Peñas. She's a professor of mathematics from Ateneo de Manila University. She's currently Associate Dean of Research and Creative Work. She's a column editor of Mathematical Intelligencer. And next, we have our project team members. So we have Dr. Maria Alva Q. Aberin, an assistant professor of the mathematics department of Ateneo de Manila University, also currently board member of the Philippine Council of Mathematics Teachers Educators Incorporated, or MathTED. With her is Mr. Len Patrick Dominic M. Garces, currently a PhD math candidate of the University of South Australia and a former lecturer in the Ateneo Mathematics and Economics departments. We also have Dr. Mark Eloyola, 
who is an assistant professor in the Ateneo Mathematics Department. And yours, and yours truly, Jumela Sarmiento, I am an associate professor of the Mathematics Department and former president of the Mathematical Society of the Philippines. Following me is Dr. Mark Anthony C. Tolentino, currently associate chair of the Mathematics Department, assistant professor also of the Mathematics Department. And we also have uh, Dr. Debbie Marie uh, Versosa, a former member of the Ateneo Mathematics Department and currently associate professor at the University of Southern Mindanao. She's also a board member of the Philippine Council of Mathematics Teachers Educators Incorporated. And uh, lastly, we have our project staff, Earl John Sinahon, an undergrad student, a BS Mathematics student. So these are the members of project team. You can check us out. We will flash this again uh, throughout the webinar, but you can check us out at the matplusresources.wordpress.com. You can also see us on Facebook, also on YouTube, and you can always send us an email to the following email address. Now, Without further ado, let us hear from our team leader, Dr. De Las Peñas, to give us an introduction on the use of apps for blended learning. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Luis Antoinette De Las Peñas. Hello, Ninette. Hello. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning to you, uh, uh, Dr. Jumela. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning to all the listeners who are tuned in in this webinar. Uh, good morning to all the teachers uh, from Makati. I hope you are doing well, uh, despite the circumstances that we are in uh, uh, today. Um, so, as Dr. Sarmiento has mentioned, uh, today uh, we are going to uh, share with you some of the mathematical applications that we have uh, created for blended learning. Actually, our project uh, started in 2016. The Math Plus team, uh, under the, the Department of Science and Technology, Fisher and Banner, started this project, creating mathematical applications um, uh, to help supplement uh, the K-12 basic education curriculum, uh, specifically the mathematics conceptual framework. And we focused on creating mathematical applications that could uh, help students uh, apply uh, their problem solving skills as well as uh, critical thinking, which are the twin goals of uh, mathematics uh, education in the mathematics conceptual framework. So we created mathematical applications alongside the following strands. So numbers, measurement, algebra, geometry, probability, and statistics. So even before the COVID-19 pandemic, the Department of Education has already targeted the use of technology, for example, through the DepEd computerization program. Briefly, the DepEd computerization program aims to equip schools with ICT such as lab packages and electronic classrooms to raise the level of ICT literacy and improve the teaching and learning process. So in mathematics specifically, the use of technology is encouraged. So quoting from the DepEd curriculum guide, we recognize that the use of appropriate tools is necessary in teaching mathematics. And this will include calculators, computers, smartphones, tablet, uh, PCs, and the internet. Now, as we uh, 
uh, change our uh, modalities of teaching from blended learning, from face-to-face -to, -face to blended learning, uh, we propose to supplement several options with interactive math ap applications that may be played at, at home. And this is what we have done in the past uh, year. We have created applications that are based on the following principles. First, the apps are free and internet connection is required one time during download. The apps can be played even with limited supervision, are aligned with the official curriculum and the local setting, are interactive, and are more than just uh, glamorized worksheets. So as I mentioned, the apps are free, and the internet connection is required only once when you download the app. The apps run in a uh, very small uh, memory and can be uh, installed immediately on mobile phones, tablets, or laptops, desktops. And if uh, one does not have access to the internet, one can also share the files from one device to another using, uh, say, wireless file transfer such as Bluetooth or using, say, a USB. Now, the apps were designed such that uh, the learner can play this even with a limited supervision because we recognize that during this time, uh, the students may not always be with their teachers and sometimes they are left alone so that uh, uh, the apps can be played and explored by them even without much guidance. So the apps can... Uh, be used not just for synchronous sessions, but as well for asynchronous sessions. And students can use or play the apps at their own time. And uh, activities with the apps can be embedded in the lessons. Now we have created the apps uh, to align with the official DepEd curriculum. And more importantly, aligned with the DepEd most essential learning competencies. We also made sure that the apps were prioritized based on the needs uh, as we conducted several uh, needs assessment uh, the past uh, years. We collaborated with target schools and communities to ensure that the apps are relevant to the needs of the students in, our lo in a localized setting. So the apps are interactive and are more than just glamorized worksheets. And you will see this in some uh, demonstrations that we are going to have later on this morning. So the apps are designed in a game-like environment, most especially those uh, that pertain to grades one to six applications. And uh, the idea is that by doing better in the game, children develop a stronger understanding of mathematical concepts. So the apps facilitate exploration, visualization, justification, and also provide instant feedback. For the grade seven to 10 apps, teachers may ask students to submit their answers or conjectures, and students may work in groups and passively give comments to classmates as well. So our apps are proven by research, and Dr. Sarmento has mentioned this earlier, uh, our studies have shown that students responded positively to the use of mathematical applications and that there is a significant increase in students' performance after exposure to the apps. So here are some of the papers that we have published uh, the past years. And um, in case you are interested to read some of our research, uh, it's available at the arcium.ateneo or you can email us. I will flash an email address later on, and you can request for uh, copies of these papers. Um, Dr. Uh, uh, Sarmiento also mentioned earlier that uh, we have also papers um, just uh, that came out uh, just recently. And uh, we uh, also highlight the gamification strategies employed uh, by our Math Plus applications 
in these papers. So the first was the ICCE conference. The proceedings uh, are now available. This uh, happened uh, last month, last November. And last night, um, uh, we presented our results uh, as a plenary lecture in the uh, Asian Technology Conference in Mathematics. So our sample apps uh, are in our website. I will flash this later on. Uh, here are some of these, which uh, are for grades uh, one to six. And uh, one can download these. There are two versions actually that are available in our website. There is the version that uh, you can download for the computer and the laptop, and one that you can download for, for the cell phone or the tablet. Now, for the grade 7 to 10 apps, uh, you could also run these apps on, on uh, the laptop or the computer. Currently, we have one version available that could work for both the laptops as well as the, uh, uh, say, the tablet or the cell phone. For the uh, apps that run, uh, that, that you would want to use for the computer or laptop, uh, we also have a link in the website, and you can download for free an Android emulator. And this is uh, the interface of, uh, say, Bluestacks. You can just uh, download all the apps, and there is this interface, and you can just click the app that you would want to look at or, or play with one at a time in the computer. So we also have GeoGebra applets. Uh, this could also run on uh, not just the Android devices, but also in iOS systems. And this do not require installation and can be opened using an internet browser. However, uh, I can o you can also download the GeoGebra application itself. You just go to the GeoGebra site. And if you open the applications using the GeoGebra software, you could also have uh, access and and play uh, uh, when when you would want to design a similar application such as what we have created using GeoGebra. You can also replay how we have constructed uh, the application. So that's the advantage if you open the app using the GeoGebra application. And I invite the teachers that you could also create your own applications and use as samples what we have created using GeoGebra. So this is our website, and Dr. Sarmento also mentioned this earlier, matplusresources.wordpress.com. And uh, say for grades one to six, um, we have the contents. So you could uh, look at the grades one to six apps. Uh, there are uh, videos, so to give you a general idea about what uh, these are, so you can uh, listen and uh, at your own time and play the videos. And we have arranged uh, the apps by strands and grades level, and you can uh, simply go to the, the app that uh, you think would be useful, depending on what you are teaching and just download the app accordingly. Now, there are also a particular, uh, we are happy that some of our uh, uh, teachers uh, in uh, Dep from DepEd Mandaluyong, our partner, has created some videos using the apps. So you could also use this as an example uh, for your lessons. Now, uh, to guide you, we have uh, a table such as this. So this is particularly for grade one mathematics, but you could also uh, explore the other grade levels. So the most essential learning competencies are listed. And uh, this is based on the curriculum guide and the particular app that uh, you could use that addresses the most essential learning competency is match as well. So 
uh, this would uh, be a helpful guide for uh, the teachers. So same thing for the grade seven to 10 up, you can uh, explore the video uh, and also download the grade seven to 10 ups, depending on uh, uh, the strand and the grade level. And we also have teaching guides to help you uh, uh, alongside the corresponding app. And these are also arranged according to uh, the most essential learning competencies. And you can check out the website for more details. So this is an example of a teaching guide. So this is a product of two binomials using algebra tiles. So this is for quarter two and grade seven. So check us out at the following uh, uh, addresses. And if you have also more questions about the app, uh, please email us. Later on, uh, Dr. Tolentino will also share with you our web-based application, which is for statistics. This is uh, available. You could just uh, Google Math Plus Resources, and you will led, be led to this site as well. And uh, Dr. Tolentino will explain more about this. So Dr. Sarmiento mentioned that we are very happy uh, that we have established partnerships with three deaf ed uh, schools, and we look forward to a new partnership with deaf ed uh, Makati uh, later on today. So uh, for now, uh, I would like to uh, turn you over back to Dr. Sarmiento. And thank you very much. Uh, for listening and good day. Thank you very much, Dr. De Las Penas. So uh, Dr. De Las Penas gave an overview of the apps that we have prepared for grades one to 10, and also an overview about the Censo Escuela Filipinas. Our next speakers will uh, explain and demonstrate these apps more in detail. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Debbie Marie Versosa, who will be demonstrating some apps for grades one to six. I will now present our math apps for grades one to six. In this video, I will show the apps and how they are connected to the official DepEd competencies. Then towards the end, I will give some short tips on how to integrate the apps in the classroom. Marami kaming mga nagawang apps, but in this video, I will focus on the apps that uh, involve some of the most important or foundational competencies. Ito ang mga competencies na kung hindi na naiintindihan sa umpisa, medyo mas mahirapan na ang mga bata sa math. Pinili ko rin ang mga apps na pwedeng magamit ng mga bata sa iba't ibang grade levels. So let's begin. A foundational concept in elementary mathematics is the mastery of basic facts. Sigurado ako, kahit grade 5 or 6 ang tinuturuan ninyo, may mga sunti pa rin kayong nagbibilang ng paisa-isa tulad nito. So, this topic actually, uh, mastery of basic facts, is also emphasized in the official DepEd um, curriculum. For example, in grade 1, you see here, visualizes in ads, so mga one-digit number yan. Grade 1 pa rin, you have subtracts. And then you also have grade two. Okay. The thing is, there are 100 addition facts. Meron pa ngang subtraction facts. Kung tayo ng mga nakatatanda, nahihirapan mag-memorize, paano pa kaya ang mga bata? This is why the first app that I will show you will help children learn the basic facts, but not through memorization. Instead, they will learn through visual patterns. Visualization is actually emphasized in the depth ed curriculum, and our app hopes to address this. An important visual aid is the 10 frame, as you can see here. Okay, the kind of visual aid helps children think in terms of 5 or 10 para hindi sila laging nagbibilang ng paisa-isa. Nung wala pang pandemic, pwede namin gamitin to ng face-to-face, -face, pero ngayon, app muna ang ating gagamitin. 
So this is the quick images game. So if we choose a level, for example, 1 to 10, normal, play. So may mga dots makita, but they disappear. And then the user or the learner has to figure out how many. So we click lang natin, 1. Ganyan. And then the reason bakit nawawala siya, eh para hindi magbibilang ng paisa-isa ang mga bata. So for example, dito makita niya, you have 10 here. Okay, 10. Okay, 1. And then here, you may imagine mga bata, may 4 and 1. So it's also practice on addition. Okay, you also have um, a larger um, set, 10 frames. So maraming mga pwedeng ma-practice dito sa app na ito. So again, the reason why in quick images the dots disappear quickly is para hindi laging nagbibilang ng paisa-isa and children are helped to form their own strategies. Katulad dito sa picture na ito, when they see this, hopefully they form the strategy na yung 18 pala is 20 minus 2, diba may kulang na dalawa, or 10 plus 8. So this is how we help them add or subtract. Visualizing numbers is not just for one-digit numbers but also for two or more digits and this actually recurs in many grade levels. So para lang makita ninyo, meron yan sa grade 1. Okay, you can actually, when you download this video, pwede nyo balikan itong mga competencies na ito hanggang grade 2. Okay, and in fact, there is also a representation um, for money. Okay, grade 3. Okay, luma pareho lang halos yung competency but the number range tumataas ng tumataas. Okay, grade 4, or higher numbers, and includes even not just addition, subtraction, but other operations as well. And then I will show you the frame game. So in the frame game, a target number is shown. Here it's 68. Tapos current, we are at 9. Tapos pipindutin din itong mga buttons para umabot ng 68. And you actually have here a visual clue para sa mga bata. Tapos group siya in tens kasi, di ba, by tens tayo nag-add and subtract. So 22, 32, we are actually practicing grouping and regrouping here. 52, 62, okay? And then ngayon, plus 1 na, up to 68, okay? Um, for a more challenging level, nakalagay na dito moves left. So you have to think of the most efficient strategy. So hindi pwedeng mag minus 1 lang kayo hanggang umabot ng 80. Okay? Kailangan isipin ninyo ano yung pinaka um mabilis katulad nito 14 so what's the fastest strategy okay at na ayon sa depth and curriculum pwede rin may money representation meron din tayo niyan so halimbawa ito makita niyo 5 piso 10 piso if the target is 15 so we have to subtract. Well, nasa advanced level tayo, um, there are moves left here. So kailangan matapos natin to in five moves. Okay, 44, 34. Mag-iisip tayo muna, 24. Okay, 14. Okay, we only have one move left. So we have plus one. And then you see here the visual clue. And then of course, we have larger numbers for the higher levels, digits naman. So, ganito na itsura niya. Hindi lang siya, um, hindi lang siya plus 1, plus 10, meron nang hanggang dito. So, you see that this single app can be used for many grade levels. If you're thinking, yung app na yun para lang sa whole numbers, it's meron kami para sa decimal, para sa integers, para man sa higher levels. So, like ito, meron grade 4, may decimals na, grade 5, decimals, and then integers also in grade 6. And then we have an app for that. This is the grid game, very similar to the frame game earlier. You have a target, tapos kailangan ni add natin. But the visual clue, hindi na siya yung mga manga or money, but it's a grid. So again, this helps children think in terms of 10. So kung ang target in 47, nasa 85 tayo, pwede tayo mag minus 10. May clue yan, tapos yan. Okay, so meron din kasi para sa decimals, right? So, ito siya. So, I will not do it. At least, may idea tayo. Ito yung sa decimals. Ganyan. And then, you can also have larger numbers. For example, up to 1,000. You up, meron ng tatlong button. And then, believe me, this is not so easy. So, maganda ito because it develops higher order thinking skills. Especially kung lalaktaw ka na ng 
green. Nasa 200 tayo ngayon. Paano ko yung target mo? 150. So, mapapaisi talaga ang mga bata. Okay? And also for integers. So, this is how the grid looks for integers. If the target is negative 45, okay, dito mag-iisip kayo anong pipindutin ko para umabot sa negative 45. And for added challenge, we also have the same as before. We have moves left. And then, Even more advanced, wala na yung number. So, you really have to test your visualization skills. And finally, dito wala na yung grid. So, I hope you can explore this to see the many possibilities. You have in whole number, decimals, integers, and you can change the range. Another Eating topic in the grade school curriculum is this, comparing numbers or arranging them in the number line. And we also have an app for that. This is the order game. Let's say we try the medium one. Okay, so roll a die. Okay, you just drag number anywhere at the start. Okay, roll lang roll. And then let's say you put the 12 here. May lalagay dyan incorrect order kasi ang goal pala dapat correctly in order yung mga numbers from lowest to highest. Okay, so you discover that while playing the game. So the thing is, we only have 11 channels left. So hopefully matapos natin to, mabuo natin yung linya bago tayo pabusan ng chances. So 42, hindi ma pwede dito. So we have 42, okay, 15, hindi pwede. So 51, wala na tayo. So humihirap actually ito habang tumatagal. So, swertihan eh, kung mali ang lagay ninyo, yun, medyo mahirapan tayo, 51, wala. So, this also helps you practice estimation. At the same time, there is an element of luck. And at the same time, it also helps you um, develop number sense. Katulad nito, tama ba nilagay ko dyan ng 12? 11 na lang ang chance ko. I only have two chances left. Sana may 11 lumabas. Wala pa rin. Wala. So this is actually a skill that we develop na isipin natin tama ba na ilagay dito yung 12 and so on. And then there are options for fractions and integers. And actually pwede nyo ring gawing mas malaki para sa higher grade levels. So ayan na siya, medyo mas malaki na yung mga numbers. Again, this is something you can explore. For integers, it's the same except that there is a negative sign or positive, pwede positive and negative. So Ayan siya, for integers. For fractions, there is an extra thing here. So makita nyo kung fractions, meron ding drawing dito. So you can actually compare. So kunwari, one half. One half is smaller than one fourth. And you can see that in the drawing. One third is smaller than one half. And you can see that in the drawing. Another app that relates to comparing numbers and arranging on the number line is the frame game. Uh, I mean the catch the carrot game, which I will show you now, catch the carrot. This is the catch the carrot app. So here you can choose a grade level. Okay, click play, 0 to 10. Okay, so you see here a number line. Tapos iisipin natin saan dito sa number line mahulog ang 2. Okay, so you will have feedback here. So this is... Uh, this gives us practice on estimation. This is just for grade 1. Of course, there are um, levels depending on the grade level. So let's say we choose grade 5. Pwede na tayong from 0 to 1,000. So halimbawa dito, okay, we now have 0 up to 1,300 is around here. Okay, kung mali, so you have feedback there. So you have 952 and so on. There are also options for fractions. Okay, let's say you look at grade 4. You have unit fractions. Okay, so for example, you have here a rectangle. Where is one fourth? So it's around there. Okay, so meron din tayong for improper fractions and all of those. So this just gives you an overview of what you can see here in the Catch the Carrot app. So the two apps I showed you um, are related to comparing numbers. And then you can see that it occurs in many grade levels from grade 1, compares numbers, grade 2, grade 3, and so on, up to grade 6, compares integers. 
the last skill that I want to discuss in this video is estimation which again occurs in many grade levels, grade three estimates the sum, grade four estimates the product, and so on. This is the target number game. We can choose, for example, greatest sum. Tapos meron ditong lalabas na mga numbers, and then we will interchange or swap some of them para yung sagot yung pinakamalaki. So dito, ma-develop din yung estimation. Of course, if you want the largest sum, dapat nasa 100 siguro yung malalaking digit. So we move the eight here, and then we can check. Okay, submit. Congratulations. You got the best result. Okay. Actually, ito, palagay ko, ma-challenge kayo. This is not very easy. How to make the least difference. So, for example, ito, if you submit, sasabihin niya, try again. The best is 37. Medyo malayo-layo pa tayo. So, you have to think, kung gusto niyo least difference, siguro dapat malapit na malapit yung nasa hundreds. Okay? So, pwede natin gawing 600 plus, minus 500 plus, and so on. If you click, sasabihin, Oh, malayo pa rin. So, we can interchange that. Mas maliit pa rin yung sum and uh, yung difference. So, um, I suggest that you use this as a higher order thinking skill task. This is not um, very straightforward and medyo mag-enjoy tayo dito paano mahanap yung least difference. And to show you, there's also a version for integers. So, pwedeng magkaroon ng negative. Ayan siya. So the question is, how do we use this in the classroom? So my suggestion for lessons or for formative assessment, siguro, we just ask children to play with the app. Siguro, for a fixed amount of time per day, like 15 minutes, they play with it. Let them enjoy and reach as many levels as possible. The apps were designed to be game-like, hindi sila lecture. So ang idea nito ay sa paglalaro ng mga bata ng app, mas mauunawaan nila ang mga pinakamahalagang konsepto ng app. Pagdating naman sa mga exam, syempre, pwede kayong humingi ng screenshot sa mga bata. Pero balansihin din natin. If we always require screenshots, the fun element disappears and then playing becomes tiring. Yung makakapagod kasi screenshot ka na lang ng screenshot. So one suggestion is to give worksheets that can help children process what they learned in the app. Kasi sa app, naglalaro lang sila. Pagkatapos maglaro, pwede naman silang sumagot ng mga tanong. Another reason why we need uh, alternative to screenshots is not all children have yung ready access to the internet, di ba? Tapos kailangan pa nilang humingi ng tulong. So pwede naman magbigay tayo ng worksheets tulad ng ginagawa naman natin ngayon sa mga module. So for example, dun pinakita ko yung isang app kanina and then pwede kayong gumawa kasi ng app uh, sorry, pwede kayong gumawa ng worksheet na magagamit yung knowledge nila dun sa app. So halimbawa ito, meron tayong uh, nasa number 86 tayo. Kung ang target ay 49, ilang beses tayo pipindot ng minus 1, plus 1, and so on. Tapos magbibigay tayo ng halimbawa para ng mga bata kung paano nila sagutan yung mga exercises. Another example is this. Doon sa 10 frames, di ba? Ang pwedeng tanong, gumuhit ng dagdag na bilog para umabot ng walo. Mag-isip ng iba't ibang pwesto ng bilog para umabot ng walo. So actually, maraming paraan para umabot kayo ng 8 or walo. So ito yung mga inaasahan nating mga sagot. Okay? The thing is, when the children do this, na, na po process nila yung nalaro nila sa app, they also see patterns. They see that 8 is 5 and 3. They can also see that 8 is 10 minus Two. In fact, that task can be used for a summative assessment or performance task because it applies knowledge, is not limited to a single answer, and it demonstrates learning through transfer to new situations. So kung nag-iisip kayo ng performance task, I hope that gives you an idea. That's just a simple idea. Siyempre, um, if you want more details, that's for another time. This is just an orientation. So having said that, um, I only presented to you some of the apps we have, so please visit our website, www.mathplusresources.wordpress.com. Meron app dyan for multiplication. Meron for multiplication, di ba yung um, repeated addition ito by number line, nasa DepEd din yan, di ba? We also have number search. We also have uh, visibility. And then there's also factors. And then, meron ding matching game. Itong matching game, maraming topic ito. Meron pang um, lower grade levels, di ba? Recognizing 
it's all about visualization, visualizing fractions, decimals, whole numbers. Okay, and there's also a version for target. So what two cards will you choose para umabot ang target na one? Or dito target na ten. So it's also addition and subtraction at the same time. Okay, so please play with the apps. Look at our website, explore more features doon sa app kasi hindi ko naman hindi hindi niyo malalaman kung ano magagawa ng app hanggang laruan niyo siya at 'di ba doon sa menu maraming pwedeng paglaruan. And then this is an an ongoing project so more apps will be available soon so please visit our website regularly. Thank you so much. Thank you very much Dr. Debbie Marie Versosa. Kumusta naman kayo, mga teachers of Makati? Did you learn anything from the apps that were just presented? If you have any questions or any comments, yep, just send us a, a comment in the Facebook uh, link, no? In the Facebook Live. And we will try to answer your questions towards the end of this webinar during the Q&A portion. Now we proceed to the next speaker. It's Dr. Maria Alba Aberin, who will demonstrate some apps for grade 7 to 10. Hello, Dr. Aberin. Hello, good morning. Good morning to, good to morning. everyone. Okay, so it's my uh, pleasure to be with you this morning. And I'll be sharing uh, some mathematical apps for grades uh, 7 uh, to 10. All right, so let me start. Okay, these apps are used for visualization, uh, exploration, proving, and conjecture making, and for drill and practice. We have arranged the apps uh, according to the following strands, uh, algebra, geometry, numbers and operations, and statistics and probability. Um, and also according to grade levels. And you will see that when you visit the, the website. So for the algebra, we have different types of apps. Um, draw line, algae ops, algae tiles, linear ops, and... Uh, a lot of the GeoGebra applets. So with the draw line, students are to create a line according to uh, different conditions, not three available modes. The first one is the y-intercept, meaning given a y-intercept and a slope, they should be able to draw a line. Given two points, they should be able to draw a line. And third, uh, if you have a point and a slope, they, not only they would be able to draw a line, but they should create or rather write the equation of the line in the lower portion of, of the screen. Okay. Now for the algebra tiles, this is an app which resembles the manipulative algebra tiles. No? For the app, it has two modes. We can multiply uh, expressions and factor them as well. For the GeoGebra applets, uh, this can be used to illustrate different concepts in algebra. Among them are uh, the vertical line test, solutions to a system of linear equations, uh, the graphs of uh, a parabola or a quadratic function, and even it illustrates the arithmetic mean and geometric mean uh, property. But, but for today, I'd like to do a demonstration of the AlgeOps. Uh, this is an app which provides a visualization of addition and subtraction of integers and polynomials. It is based on the neutralization model of adding and subtracting integers. That is, you get a zero when a number and its negative or additive inverse are added together. So when you open the app, it has two modes, no? the addition mode and the subtraction. So let's start with the addition. Okay, so when the, uh, 
when you open it, when you click on the addition mode, you have two pictorial expressions that are shown uh, at the top of the screen. One above the left panel and the other at the right side uh, of the screen. The goal is to add these two expressions and we shall use the app to do this. Um, uh, for example, no, you have you have five uh, red boxes and you create this using the plus and the minus button for the box and for the balloon. So we want to create five red boxes. We use the minus button. So we do that, uh, click on that five, five times. One, oops, sorry. Uh, we click on that five times. So one, two, three, four, five. Next, we create the green balloon. So we use the plus button. Do that five times. Okay, so we are done with the left panel. Now for the right side panel, we want one red box. So we use the minus button of the box. We click this once. We want two green balloons. So we click the plus button of the balloon. So do that one and two. You know that you have done it correctly if uh, two number lines are shown below, one for the box and one for the balloon. So the goal is to add. So we just, we note we, we have a total of six uh, red boxes and a total of uh, seven green balloons. So we just drag this cursor to the left because you have red and uh, drag the cursor to until seven because you have seven balloons, okay? So we can uh, check your answer, click on check to know if you're uh, uh, correct. So the visualization here provides a connection of the red color to a negative number, and that is to the left of the number line. The green color uh, represents the positive numbers, which are to the right of, of the number line. Now, let's do another uh, example where you have different colors for the boxes and the balloons. So we create four red boxes. So we choose the minus button clicking that four times, and then one red balloon, so minus button for the balloon, but on the right side, you are to use the plus button because these are green boxes, and green balloon, so plus button again, four times, okay. Now, a pair, the next, uh, uh, thing that will happen is an animation wherein a pair of red and green boxes will disappear, okay, because that uh, they offset each other. So that is the neutralization animation. So we note there are another uh, two pairs of uh, red box and green, and then another pair. And that those two will disappear. Note also there is a pair of red and green balloon, and they will also disappear. So again, at the end, you you will see your number line from where you can uh, encode your answer. So you have one red box. So there you go, and you have three green balloons. But suppose what will happen if you encoded, if you if we encode uh, a wrong answer? Note if you try to check, it gives you a feedback that your answer is incorrect, and then it highlights the figure where uh, you got it wrong. Okay, so that's the uh, addition addition mode. Now uh, let's try the subtraction mode. Okay, if we click on that. We note that you have a different uh, interface. No? You have a um, uh, figure on the main screen, 
Okay, you have three red boxes and one balloon, green balloon, but you are instructed to remove these two figures, two uh, red boxes and one green balloon. But note that this screen suggests the ex or represents the expression minus 3x plus 1, which is on the main screen, and you are to remove or subtract two red boxes or negative 2x plus 1, which is represented by the uh, one red uh, green um, uh, balloon. So uh, to do this, we use the minus buttons for each figure. So you are to remove two uh, red boxes. So click on this twice. Okay, one and two. Okay, so you have removed two red boxes and notice the two red boxes disappeared. Now you also remove one uh, green uh, balloon. So that is you remove, you use this button minus or remove one green balloon. Click on that and it disappears. Okay, so the number line appears wherein you can encode your answer and you can verify if your answer is correct all right now let's have this example wherein you have six green boxes and two red balloons but you are instructed to remove you're instructed to remove three green balloons okay note that this uh, represents the expression 6x with the because there are six boxes plus negative 2 because you have two red balloons here and you are to remove 3 no? positive 3 because this is green okay but the problem is there are no green balloons on screen on the main screen so that means there you must introduce the three green balloons and how do you do that Look at the bottom of the screen. You have this plus, these symbols, no? A plus, one green, and one red. Okay, so note that if you use this symbol, if you click on this, what happened? You introduced one, a green and red balloon, okay? This one, green and red. Is that okay? Yes, it's okay because this represents an addition of, of, that's right, zero. But you need three. You need to have three. So do that three times. And there you go. So uh, you now have uh, three green balloons with you, which you can delete. Okay. So that means you can delete this three by pressing minus button of the green balloon. So when you do that three times, one, two, three, and it disappears. So you now have, uh, you can now. Uh, you're now ready to encode your answers, which is positive uh, six. So you encode that on the on the number line for the uh, box, and also the balloons, the red on the left. Okay, and then you can check your answer. Now, as I end this demonstration, I want you to I want to emphasize the process of subtraction that is visualized in the app. Now, we started with this problem. Okay, and we ended up with this. That is removing three green balloons resulted to adding three red balloons. Okay, again, removing three green resulted to adding three red. But isn't that your subtraction? That is subtracting three is the same thing as adding its additive inverse as seen or visualized in the in the app okay so this is one of the affordances of the algae ops which is to provide a visualization uh, of the rules and procedures that we give our students and studies have uh, shown that when students are exposed to different representations, especially if they are given visuals, no? uh, visuals of the concepts, they are more likely to remember, to understand, 
and appreciate the ideas they encounter, no? All right. So these are the apps for the algebra strand. For the geometry strand, we let me share with you some, uh, particularly the Prove It uh, app. Okay, uh, but there are uh, a lot more apps in the in the website. But this is very, uh, I, this is one of my favorites. So let me share that this to you. And besides, uh, this is. Uh, very useful if we want to train our students and hone their skills in proving. Okay, now uh, uh, we are able to do this because the app provides scaffolding measures that aid the students in carrying out the steps as they prove. So, for example, this uh, particular mode uh, helps the student identify the reasons or rather the postulates or theorems that will justify the triangle congruence or if the triangles are, are really congruent because it's possible that the given figure, the given triangles are not congruent. So they should press this. But they should choose among these postulates and theorems that will say, are that will uh, 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 allow them to see if the triangles are indeed congruent. So they would think, oh, okay, you have a pair of sides that are congruent, okay, another pair, so that's an S again, and then they would see that these are vertical angles, so that's the A. So they should press SAS to, uh, to answer uh, this particular item, okay? And you have this another example. So they analyze, are the two triangles congruent? Why is that? So they identify, is there a pair of sides that are congruent, a pair of angles that are congruent, okay? And also this one. So this is one mode of the Prove It app. Another mode is, this time, they will have to prove it, but not by a two-column proof, but they just uh, identify, actually, there's already uh, a hint here that to prove the con the triangle congruence, they would use ASA. So they identify which pair of sides are congruent. So to identify that, they drag on the side, no? They drag on this side and on this side if they if these two are congruent, okay? And uh, the app, if, if they have uh, uh, chosen correctly, that's, those sides will, uh, will be highlighted. Okay, so uh, that's a Prove It app. Now, um, GeoGebra has more apps in store for the learning of geometry. These apps are designed for exploratory work no, and discovery of properties of lines, of angles, of triangles, and circles. Okay, so we, oh, we also have designed uh, uh, applets which resemble a two-column proof, but uh, it is enhanced with animation. And so the students can be aided in their reasoning and in their thought processes. So these are just some of those examples. So notice it resembles your two-column proof. All right. So, yeah, I think that's for the geometry strand. For the numbers and operation strands, no, we you can uh, still use the apps uh, mentioned by Dr. Versosa a while ago, ordering game, catch a carrot, and the grid game, because there are modes here that are appropriate for the grade seven, no, because there's a mode on integers uh, for 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 this uh, for these games or for these apps. And lastly, for statistics and probability. We have apps that allow students to describe sample data, okay? And you, sh you can use this app, uh, which generates histogram and computes for measures of central tendency. There is also an app there that which uh, allows the teaching or, or illustrates the counting, sorry, the counting principle uh, a simulation of spinning a wheel, a rolling a die, 
and drawing uh, a deck of a deck of cards. Now later on, uh, you will see another application that can be used in statistics. But should you wish to try these apps, you can visit and check us out at the following uh, sites. Okay, so that's it for for uh, for my uh, presentation. Uh, these are the apps which you can use for the uh, grade seven to uh, grade seven to ten. So um, I hope you were able to get um, or your interest has have been uh, picked by by this uh, uh, by these apps and to talk about. Uh, the app, the new application that I mentioned a while ago on statistics, I will turn you over to Dr. Mark Tolentino. Uh, he will share the Censo Escuela Pilipinas. Go ahead, Mark. Thank you very much, Dr. Abirin. Um, magandang umaga po sa lahat ng ating mga guro na kasama natin ngayon, nakikinig or nanonood sa Facebook uh, live stream. So in the interest of time, let me uh, proceed immediately to my uh, presentation. Let me share my screen. So let me present to you our uh, statistics uh, web application called Censo Escuela Filipinas. Hello, I'm Mark Tolentino from the Math Plus team of the Ateneo de Manila University. Today, I will be presenting Censo Escuela Filipinas, or SET for short, which is a component of our project devoted to providing resources for teaching and learning statistics. Primarily, SET is an online platform that serves as a rich source of data and resources for teaching and learning grades 1 to 11 statistics. It consists of a database that will be populated by the data of students from answering our SET survey, which collects authentic, relevant, and relatable data. Our SET database provides really accessible data that can be used for various activities for teaching and learning statistics at any grade level. Moreover, our resources include teaching guides, student worksheets, and video demonstrations dedicated to the use of SEP in the classroom. SEP can be freely accessed at mathplusresources.com. For the remainder of my presentation, I'll be discussing how to use this online platform, SEP. When you go to mathplusresources.com, this is the homepage that you will see. If you're a teacher who's a new user to our website, 
the first thing you should do is to register an account with us. To do this, simply click on the register here link. And this page will show up. In order to create an account, you have to provide an email address that ends with .edu, edu.ph, gov, gov.ph, or .org. But don't worry if you don't have such an email available. You can still create an account with us by sending a request to mathclassapps at gmail.com. Once you've filled in all the required information, just click on register. This will send a verification email to the email address that you provided. To complete your account registration, just click on the verify email address button. With your account registration completed, you can now log in to SET. Once you're logged in, you will see the teacher section shown in the screen. In general, using the SET platform consists of a four-step process. First, you have to create classes and student codes. Then you have to distribute these student codes to your classes. These first two steps can be done using the Manage Classes feature in your teacher section. Next, we will have the students answer the SEP survey, which you can view using the View the Survey button. Once all the responses are in, you can then retrieve the data for different activities for teaching and learning statistics. So you can access the data using the Access Data feature, and you can also check out our teaching guides for help in using these data for your classes. Now going into more detail, let's look at the first two steps of the process and look at the Manage Classes feature. In the Manage Classes feature, you will see this page. First, we have to create classes. To create a new class, simply click the Create New Class button that's shown on the right. Then you have to fill in class name, the grade level, section, and the number of students in the class. With those information in, you can then click Save. Once the class has been created, you can then access this class using the Select Class drop-down in the upper portion of the screen. And this is how it will look like if you access the class that you created. As you can see, there is a Download Student Codes button at the bottom. If you click this Download Student Codes button, it will download a spreadsheet file into your computer. This file will contain the student codes that you can then distribute to your students. Now, let's go back to our process and check out the third step, which is having the students answer the SEP survey. So students will have to go to mathplusresources.com as well, but then Instead of clicking in login as teacher, they will click login as student and this screen will show up and they have to enter the student code that you provided them. Once they're inside the website, this is the student section that they will see. In order to answer the survey, they have, they have to click the take the survey button. Our SEP survey consists of 31 questions that involve are relatable and relevant information for the students. So there are questions that are typical, like height. There are questions about their hometown, their hobbies, and even some interactive questions. Once they finish answering the survey, they will see a badge page that looks like this. They can take a screenshot of this badge page and send the screenshot to you as proof that they have completed a survey. Please take note that nowhere in the website will the students have to enter his or her name or any other information that will lead to his or her identity. This is why such a badge page is important to give proof that the students have already completed the survey. Now, let's go to the last step of our four-step process, which is retrieving the data. So first, let's look at 
the access data feature. This is the access data page. In the first panel, you can download your own class data. In order to do that, you simply have to select one of the classes that you have created. And then you have to select any number of questions that you would like to, to get the data for. In the second panel, you can download a random sample from the entire SEP database. In order to do this, you just need to select the school year, grade level, and the sample size that you want. Similarly, you also have to select the questions that you would like to get the data for. If you're happy with your choices, click search and a download report button will appear at the bottom of the screen. Clicking this button will download a spreadsheet file into your computer that will contain the data that you requested. Now let's look at the teaching guide section of the website. In this section, you will see teaching guides and student worksheets for different topics in the grade school, junior high school, and senior high school levels. These teaching guides and student worksheets are aligned with the depth and most essential learning competencies. These are sample graphs that you can create using the SEP data. So this is the end of my presentation. Once again, you can access SEP for free at mathplusresources.com. Even if you don't want to create an account yet, you can check out our website by logging in as a guest. For feedback, inquiries, and suggestions, you may reach us through mathplusapps at gmail.com. So thank you very much for listening to my uh, presentation. Uh, sana po ay uh, maasahan namin ang inyong participation, your active participation in Senso Escuela, Escuela Pilipinas so that we can build uh, this database together and our students will have uh, access to more uh, data, uh, more resources for uh, teaching, uh, for learning statistics and uh, we as teachers will have more resources for teach statistics as well. So uh, if you saw in the video, currently the SEP database already has uh, around 1,000 respondents. So the database already has 1,000 students uh, who have answered the survey. So uh, we want to continue uh, growing the, the database. So we hope that you can actively participate. Uh, also, we welcome any contribution to uh, the SEP website. So if you have, let's say, a teaching guide or a student worksheet or even a lecture video of yourself uh, using SEP data for your statistics classes, uh, we welcome submissions like that as well. And we can collaborate together and post this and feature this in our website. So we hope uh, we can receive your uh, participation as well. So for the next part of our program, let me call back uh, our creator, Dr. Nien. Thank you, Dr. Mark Tolentino, for your presentation on Senso Escuela Filipinas. Kumusta naman ang, ang mga teachers natin? Let me congratulate you. I heard you just finished your first quarter. So kumusta naman ang inyong first quarter of teaching? I am sure it was uh, challenging. Sana naman exciting din para sa inyo. So we are now in the question and answer portion of our webinar. May I request our speakers to be on stage to answer some of our questions. <coughs> Hello sa inyo. Hello again. Hello. Welcome back. Hello. Our first question, doc, Dr. Tolentino. Here's our ah, first okay. question. So our first question is, I'm not used to teaching with technology. 
do you have uh, tips for me? Who would like to answer the question? Dr. Mm. Talentino ba? Or <laughs> Dr. Aberin, would you like to answer? Yeah. Uh, well, there's always a first time in doing things. So uh, my number one tip is just go with it. Now try it out. Uh, of course, before you try it out with your students, you uh, you must try it on your own. You know, just like what uh, Dr. Versosa mentioned a while ago, you really have to play with the play with the apps. So you will discover uh, uh, how it will be used in class. Okay, uh, I'm I assure you that the apps that we have developed are user friendly. You no. Know? Uh, actually, nga yung mga games uh, in the apps has have no um, uh, para instructions on it, no? Kasi ganun siya kadale follow. So I encourage you just take the time to try out the apps, and you will see for yourself that they are easy to to follow, easy to use, and because you are uh, in a way experienced in class, you will be able to know when and how. It can be used with your with your students, so Thank don't be afraid much. to try it out. Thank you very much, Dr. Aberin. Do you have something to add, Dr. De Las Penas or Dr. Mark Valentino? Okay, let's proceed to the yes. next question. Yeah. Ah, can we use the apps to create performance tasks or assessment? because this is a challenge to us teachers. May I request Dr. De Las Peñas to answer the question? Uh, yes, uh, actually earlier, if you have noticed, uh, Dr. Versosa mentioned also uh, some uh, tips uh, on how to uh, uh, deal with uh, performance tasks using the apps and uh, actually it also depends no, uh, on the particular grade level as to what particular apps can be used for performance tasks uh, i want to mention that uh, some of the apps have actually different levels and i think that was mentioned also earlier so that there are several uh, uh it also stretches no uh different uh, uh melcs as well as different grade levels and i'd like to invite uh, the listeners so uh, we are having a webinar on january 9 at 9 a.m that will deal particularly with the use of the math plus apps for performance task and assessment so i guess uh they will learn more in that particular session, Dr. Sarmiento, on January 9. On January That's 9. Saturday, okay. 9 a.m. And we will, uh, abangan nyo po yun, ilalagay po namin sa aming website, yung details and yung link. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. De Las Peñas. Thank you for uh, telling us about the January 9 event. So, uh, you have to like our page, no? yung Math Plus Resources on Facebook so that you will be updated of the next uh, events, okay? Activities, seminars, webinars, okay, of the Math Plus team. Yes, thank you. Do we have another question? Ah, how can we download the apps? Dr. Talentino, please yeah. answer. Yes, maybe I can answer. Actually, uh, I'd like to share my screen. Um, to help uh, show the teachers how to download the uh, applications. So if you go to our website, uh, mathplusresources.wordpress.com, so that's our website, uh, this is the home page that you will see. So uh, here we have the grades uh, one to six uh, page. So if you want to download an app, so just click on this, uh, download the grades one to six apps, and you will be left to this uh, matrix. So depending on the strand and the grade level, uh, you select uh, the, the option that is correct for you. So let's say 
we do grades one to two numbers and place value. So go to this page. And then uh, this is how it looks like. So for example, the Quick Images app, uh, which is the, the app that uses the 10 frame uh, structure that Dr. Versosa showed earlier. So if you want to download that, uh, here, here are the download links. So the Android logo, of course, is for your uh, Android smartphone or your Android tablet. Or you can also use that in an emulator for your computer. But there's also a PC version. So this is for Windows PC. So if you click on these links, uh, it will download the installation file. And then you just click on that installation file so that the app will be installed to your smartphone, your tablet, or your computer. So I hope uh, that helps our teachers no, in uh, accessing these uh, applications. No? So there are many apps here, though, the ones that have been shown uh, in the earlier presentation. Thank you very much, Dr. Tolentino. Do we have more questions? <laughs> ah, sino daw yung cute na lumilipad at nakabarong mm -hmm. din? May I request Dr. De Las Peñas to introduce to us who is that uh, creature? <laughs> <laughs> creature. <laughs> yung cute na yun, eh siya po si... Banoy bilang. O, kung napansin nyo po, uh, nakabarong nga siya kanina. At saka may mga, minsan naka, ano naman siya, naka uh, parang school uniform. Or minsan naka playing, uh, playing attire siya. So, strike anywhere siya. Formal or naka-informal wear. Gumagamit pa rin siya ng up. <laughs> At saka, kasama po natin siya. <laughs> kasama po siya ng mga bata. At din mga teacher as we uh, proceed to our math journey. Now, uh, a little history lang, tinawag po namin siyang Banoy because that's a Filipino for eagle. Eagle siya. And bilang because count, no? Uh, so, mahilig siya magbilang. And to understand mathematics. So, kahit challenging, uh, enjoy lang siya. So we hope that he could uh, be our partner as we proceed uh, to help as well all the, the learners out there in their struggles with mathematics. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. De Las Peñas. Uh, I'm sorry we have to end our question and answer portion because we do not have enough, enough time. If you have any question, just send us an email or send us a message to our uh, Facebook page. So we are now going to our next part. It's the Memorandum of Understanding Signing Ceremonies. To give us a short message is our Vice President for Social Development, Mr. Rizalino Rivera. Hello, VP Lino. He's Hi. very uh, good morning. Good morning. He's instrumental in making this partnership with SDO Makati City and our other partnership that were, you know, they made all of this partnership possible. So let us all welcome VP Lino Rivera. Uh, good morning. Magandang umaga po sa lahat. Uh, Hindi ko lang ko nandito si SDS. Uh, magandang umaga. Magandang umaga sa mga tiga uh, division ng Makati. Uh, natutuwa po ako sa umagang ito dahil nagkasama ang dalawang organisasyon na malapit sa aking puso, ang aking ang Ateneo de Manila at ang DepEd. Maraming salamat po sa Makati at pinaunlakan nyo ang aming uh, invitasyon na makasama dito sa proyektong ito. Um, itong pandemya ay maraming hamon na dinudulot sa ating lahat. No? Pero ito rin pagkakataon para tayo maging malikhain. At katulad na nga, ng ginawa ng team ni na Doktora Ninet ay kumuha sila ng paraan para maituro pa rin ang math kahit sa ganitong kondisyon. 
Kaya natutuwa po kami at uh, nagkasama tayo dito. Sana ay marami pang pagkakataon na ganito. Um, isang advertisement yung Ateneo School of Education and Learning Design ay malapit na pong itayo. So, inimbitahan po namin kayo uh, yung mga gustong magpatuloy ng kanilang graduate studies. Uh, welcome po kayong mag-apply. Papaalam po natin sa inyong uh, SDS kung kailan open ang application. Meron din po mga scholarship. Okay. Uh, so, isa pong paniyaya yan at isang advertisement. No? Sana by next year open na yung application. Sige po, maraming salamat po ulit at sana nga ay ito ay simula ng marami pang partnership between uh, Ateneo and uh, the Division Office of Makati. Mabuhay po kayong lahat. Thank you very Thank you. much, VP Lino Rivera. Thank you for also telling us about the opening of the School of Education at Ateneo de Manila University. I think it will be in 2021. So let's go back to the Memorandum of Understanding. The purpose of this MOU is to provide a framework and guidelines for the partnership between the MATPLUS team from Ateneo de Manila University and the DepEd SDO Makati City in implementing the different uh, projects and activities. The MATPLUS apps will be made available to our teachers of Makati City free of charge and we also hope to provide orientation, training, webinars to uh, supervisors and the math teachers on the use of this application. On the other hand, uh, SDO Makati will ensure the engagement and the participation in the program of all public school math teachers of Makati and the use of the adoption of the Math Plus resources. And then both parties will help monitor the progress of the use of the application. May I now call on stage our team leader, Dr. Maria Aluis Antoinette de las Peñas, okay, to witness the signing of the MOU. Okay. And also Mr. Michael Lee, Education Supervisor of Mathematics. May I call you on stage? Yes. Hello. Hello sa inyong dalawa. Hello. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Michael. Uh, please unmute yourself. Ah, hello. Good morning, Pa. Good morning. Good morning. We'll proceed with a MOA signing. Okay. Now, since we are in the new normal, we also have a new way of the M of MOU signing. So please watch the video. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hindi tayo makapalakpak, no? <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for making this partnership possible. Of course, VP Lino Rivera, SDS Carleen Cedilia, Mr. Michael Lee. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and on behalf of, oh, she's here. Let's wait a bit for SDS Cedilia. Yeah, good morning. Po. Hello, Senior good morning, Michael. ma'am. Oh, uh, I heard you. I am watching you streamlined on FD, but I think we're having connection problems at the SDO. So okay. first and foremost to Dr. De Las Peñas and the whole Ateneo team, of course, our EPS, or Michael Lee, uh, to former USEC Rivera, we miss you in depth. <laughs> so to all the Ateneo team, to all our math teachers, magandang magandang uh, umaga po sa ating lahat. Uh, before we enter into the MOA signing, I was supposed to give the Opening, pero mukhang naging closing na. <laughs> okay, so... Yes, ma'am, uh, please give your uh, message. 
Apo, in the midst of the pandemic and with all the challenges in learning, especially distance learning, talaga pong we are very, very thankful for Ateneo for making us part of this endeavor. Uh, ito po talaga yung kailangan-kailangan ng aming mga teachers. Uh, during our initial talk uh, with the Ateneo team, I think uh, we have expressed our uh, appreciation of the project because ito po yung isa sa mga program that is truly aligned with the MELT. That's why we ensure na even po with the stiff uh, schedule that we have now, na ma-include po talaga yung mga teachers at makasali sila dito and they could be trained because we know that this application po could really help our students and our teachers a lot. Uh, kung nanikinig po ng mabuti yung ating mga teachers, uh, I hope you appreciate the efforts that Atene have put into the project and uh, we hope that you could use the vacation uh, basically to explore the application in time for us to to use it for the second grading and the rest of the grading periods. Ang maganda dito kasi po yung kanilang application is basically an integration of the different uh, strategies that you could use in mathematics. I am proud to say and I would brag to Ateneo di po ba, that Makati has a very good mathematics program under the leadership of our EPS or Mike Lee. But I know that with this application po, uh, we could be even better because ngayon napaka-challenging po talaga magturo, especially for mathematics. Diba? Yun ngang live na challenging pang magturo sa math and then more so in distance learning. So we hope that this uh, application could really help us in engaging our students to continue education and to continue learning and of course to have fun in learning. So on behalf of the whole SDO Makati team, uh, we would like to thank Atinea and simultaneous po dito na nagaganap din is the other rollout and orientation of the ALLS app din naman for other uh, subject areas, particularly English, Filipino and science. So kami po ay talagang tuwan-tuwa rin because we have entered. And because you know that if it is Ateneo, then it must be good. Di po ba? Kaya kami din po ay hindi nagdalawang isip when the program was offered to us. Uh, we promise and we commit that with this MOU and with this orientation po, uh, we will continue spreading the love for mathematics. At sana po ito ay magiging isang paraan para mas gumaling tayo, lalo na po sa pagtuturo ng mathematics. So on behalf of all of us, thank you very much po. And we are very, very happy to partner with you on this project. Good morning. Thank you very much for making this partnership possible, SDS Carlin Cedilia. We look forward to working with the mathematics teachers of Makati City, of course, to be led by our former student, Mr. Michael Lee, Education Program Supervisor in Mathematics. Now, before we close the session today, May I call on our team leader, Dr. Maria Luis de las Peñas, to say a few words. Thank you very much, Dr. Sarmiento. And uh, I'd like to express my, uh, on behalf of the Math Plus team and on behalf of Ateneo de Manila University, thank you very much, uh, SDS Carlene Sedilia, uh, for your trust uh, in our project. And to also uh, thank you, Michael, uh, for helping us as well. As we uh, begin our journey together, uh, starting uh, with this webinar, our team also commits uh, to helping the teachers, the learners in Makati. We'll do our best uh, to ensure that we uh, have our applications ready and uh, we will guide uh, the teachers in the best way we can as to the use of these applications. Earlier it was mentioned uh, throughout the webinar that this uh, new normal, the situation we are in right now, is quite challenging. But as in all challenges, if uh, friends can come together, uh, can partner together to uh, help each other, I think uh, uh, we can manage. And uh, the apps, as was mentioned also earlier, are, are there for, for the learners to also not uh, just uh, explore and understand and develop critical thinking and problem solving 
in uh, their journey in studying mathematics, but also uh, this can be used uh, for them to enjoy uh, and make math very reachable, very reachable and accessible. And uh, earlier we also mentioned that uh, we are, our next webinar is something uh, that will deal on performance tasks. And I think this is also quite challenging. We recognize uh, how challenging this will be for our teachers. So this is also something that we, we hope we can help you with uh, using uh, the applications. Uh, we can also find a way to assess the performance uh, of our students in a non-threatening way. I would also like to take this chance to thank uh, uh, the Department of Science and Technology, uh, Pichur, Engineer uh, Paringit, who has been very helpful as well. So our project is still ongoing uh, the next months. And I know that with also the our partners, such as you, the teachers are from Makati, we can improve more the applications, we can create more applications. Uh, we would uh, very much welcome your suggestions, your comments, uh, and uh, there's a lot more that we can do uh, in the next uh, months. Manila University, VP Lino, uh, who has always been very supportive, our Vice President for the Loyola Schools, Dr. Maria Lucy Vilches, our Dean of the School of Science and Engineering, Evangeline Bautista, and of course, our University President, Father Roberto Yap. So Ateneo, uh, we are, um, as part of our mission, uh, committed to excellence in education and to helping our teachers and our learners uh, through, through this difficult uh, time uh, of, of this pandemic. So with this, I would, on behalf of uh, the very hardworking team of uh, Math Plus, to thank all of you, to wish all of you and your families uh, uh, to the safe, safety first and foremost, and that the spirit of Christmas and uh, we hope that uh, 2021 will be a better year for all of us. So magandang umaga po at salamat ng marami. Thank you, Dr. De Las Peñas. That wraps up our webinar on behalf of our project team. Thank you again for your active participation. We hope that you've learned some apps that you can use in your classes. So we're visiting our website and our Facebook page are the key for more apps. Send us an email if you have any questions or if you want us to explain a particular apps more in detail. I wish you all a pleasant day. Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.